there's a misconception out there that charities with bigger reserve funds will somehow be better positioned to survive the pandemic crisis. Now, I've also heard about a sentiment that the attitudes of funders and donors may pivot to support both programs and overhead as society realizes the risk related to losing the social services we've come to enjoy. I'd argue that this is wishful thinking. The reality is 30% of jobs across all industries are at risk of automation by 2030. And that's driven by a growing mismatch between the skills people have and those that are needed in a digital world. This has only been further amplified by the economics related to the pandemic, systemic inequality, and further impacted by the opportunity gap for those most marginalized. It includes job loss, social fracturing, widening inequity. Upskilling the workforce post-pandemic to bridge this digital divide is complicated. And I believe not-for-profits are best positioned to help society re-explore what the Great Reset should look like, given the unique role they play in designing and delivering the social services and experiences that Canadians have come to expect. More importantly, not-for-profits can help lead conversations that build on the lived experience of their beneficiaries, and as we all work towards greater equality as part of a personification of Canadian values. All said, society assumes that not-for-profits can weather the economic storm because we need them. Society also assumes that this, quote, greater good will prevail post-pandemic and that community organizations with strong reserve funds track records of accountability, effective use of donor dollars, efficient balance sheets will somehow survive and thrive. All of this assumes that the right structures and processes are in place to immediately help not-for-profit leadership teams transform and so they don't become paralyzed with the complexity around us. But let's look at the facts for a moment. Our not-for-profit sector is oversubscribed. There are over 170,000 not-for-profits and charities around us. Canada's social sector is the second largest in the world, with over half of these organizations run entirely by volunteers. And it's well documented that not-for-profit boards and management teams are ill-equipped to navigate the governance and accountability challenges ahead. So to help change society's narrative about the value of our values-based organizations, we must go far beyond the balance sheet and focus on what I'd like to think about two key areas. First, that the not-for-profit trust deficit is reaching a tipping point, and it's not going in the right direction. Donors and funders have not adequately invested in the upskilling requirements for people, like I said before, the people who lead not-for-profit organizations. Those leaders are not prepared for the future of work and their ability to help steward data and insights to help those most in need and to hold institutions accountable in a fair and transparent manner has been limited. Secondly, by using broad not-for-profit rating or ranking systems to help compare overhead or financial information, donors and funders are in fact not able to unpack the context about why or how a community organization achieves its desired impacts. Without that narrative, we're simply hiding behind something, in this case a rating, that makes us feel good. Think of it this way. If trust is a team sport, we've got some work to do. And here's how I break down these concepts to the brass tacks from a 50,000 foot view right down to the pavement. At the 50,000 foot level, think of this as air traffic control as part of the team. Government leaders and policymakers need to ensure that citizens, one, have the knowledge to participate, and two, they themselves have the knowledge to drive discussion on the future of technology, policy reform, instruments, regulation required. While institutions of all forms, including not-for-profits, must digitally transform themselves while at the same time providing the services that are fit for the future. It's what society requires. What this is really about is each of us personally taking the time to build the skills and capabilities that will improve our relationship with data and with technology more broadly. Yes, I recognize the issue of outdated technology will remain, but that will be a continuous constant. Learning's lifelong. We must remain agile. As we go one layer down, think of this as being a passenger in the airplane with air traffic control behind us. We need to recognize that we're in the middle of a great reset and it's time for not-for-profits to work together collaboratively as a system and develop a laser focus on the problems worth solving. To achieve this, society must support an oversubscribed community sector in having courageous conversations about their purpose and if their organization should continue to exist. I would argue that many should not. 
Leaders must keep the beneficiaries of a not-for-profit social services at the fore. And with an understanding of the new levers that may be required to help future-proof the structures, the systems, and the processes to enable longer-term and more sustainable societal impacts. This kind of thinking takes talent, takes time, it takes money. Moreover, it takes radical transparency. And radical transparency about what's working well and what's not to help build trust. At the ground level, and if we're sitting in the airport, we've got to recognize that donors will remain concerned about the fundamental questions about issue and impact. What good will a not-for-profit achieve through financial support? And how much good will an organization achieve in doing so? Now, while that feels pretty good in terms of quantifying good, we must not rationalize it in a way that it inadvertently commoditizes the very people that society is trying to help. And here's what I mean. The question of how much good can be achieved is in the spotlight today. It's difficult to put a value on the economics of good when society is questioning what good is. We've traditionally defaulted to the numbers because it's easier. We've basked in our ability to quantify societal impacts and not-for-profits. For example, every dollar spent on our not-for-profit can achieve XYZ dollars good for society. Feed XYZ people a hot breakfast or equip XYZ new Canadians with the financial instruments they need to succeed. It's no wonder there's a trust gap. Not-for-profits are trying to play to win in a game of economics where the rules were cast without the social sector's engagement in the first place. At the end of the day, I'd argue that we need to reevaluate our definition of good. Donors and investors shouldn't use overhead ratios to tell us how much an organization and impact it's having. It's not their narrative to define. Instead, they should use overhead ratios to help understand the bigger picture. That is to help ask questions about why and how an organization is making a difference and what resources it needs to be successful. What it's really about is reframing thinking of good like the quality of the journey and not the destination. Remember that cash flow and scenario planning around a reserve fund, for example, are only as effective as the capabilities of the people at the organization that steward the strategy forward. Along with those leaders' commitment to upskill for the future of work. The good quality of the journey is about exploring the art of the possible. But society needs to take an honest look in the mirror and realize that the pursuit of measuring, quote, good has inadvertently diminished trust in our not-for-profit institutions. It could be argued that by simply following the money, that our not-for-profits are no better than the investors asking the tough questions. And while the journey continues, the quality of that journey remains indeed a very good question. I'm James Temple, Chief Corporate Responsibility Officer at PwC Canada, and that is my Frank Talks.